Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And it gives me great pleasure to meet you on this Monday, August 7th, for this morning's moment of prayer and devotion. I invite you to join me this morning in a word of prayer. Almighty God, it is once again that you have blessed us, you have called us together. We are so ever grateful for your love towards us and your presence with us. And now speak, Lord, because your servants are listening. Bless us on this morning that we may be great witnesses for you and in the midst of the world that we live, that others may truly know your love towards us. So with this we ask on this wonderful day, in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray, amen. On this Monday, August 7th, I invite you to hear the words that are shared with us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd through the 36th verses. And in Matthew's Gospel, we find these words. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, and after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself in order that he would pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. It had been buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to the disciples, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to seek, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately he reached out his hand and he caught him. You of little faith, Jesus said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all of the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just, be t just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched were healed. Amen. This particular narrative in Matthew is probably familiar to many who may be joining, who are listening, who uh, certainly have read this sacred text on your own. It is one of the narratives that is shared over and over again of how Jesus walked on the water. We are often sharing and many people are often wrestling with the miracles that they see in the Bible. There are many who follow Jesus because they wanted to be able not just to see miracles, but to experience those miracles for themselves. They wanted to be able to participate in some of those miracles. But I will never forget, although now it was several years ago when I was pastoring, that the congregation and I walked through a wonderful publication entitled, If You Want to Walk on Water, get out of the boat. Here, this particular publication uh, that it was shared in one of our Bible studies many years ago was the winner of the 2002 Christianity Today Book Award. I often uh, am amazed, and even in this moment, of how long ago 2002 really was. Uh, but in this, in one of the writings, it stated, you are one step away 
from the adventure of your life. Deep within you lies the same faith and longing that sent Peter walking across the windswept sea of Galilee toward Jesus. In what ways is the Lord telling you as he did Peter, come? John Ortberg, the author of that book, as it states, says, invites you to consider the, consider the incredible potential that awaits you outside of your comfort zone. Out on the risky waters of faith, Jesus is waiting to meet you in ways that will change you forever. It will, be, it will deepen and deepen your character and your trust in God. The experiences of stepping out of the boat are often terrifying, but it's thrilling beyond belief. It's everything you'd expect of someone worthy to be called Lord. The choice is yours to know him as only a water walker can know him. Aligning yourself with God's purpose for your life and the life that you're leading. There's just one requirement this writer stated. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. I remind many of us that each day we are all called to walk with a faith that is transforming for our lives and it is a witness to others. While we talk about Peter and we look at Peter, and this morning we're challenging ourselves to get out of our comfort zone, to step out of the boat that we have huddled down in, I remind you of how great our witness can be on others by looking at Peter. It is not until Peter got out of the boat, it is not until Peter walked on water, that those other 11 disciples who were hunkered down in the boat, change their witness and change their lives. It is when Jesus and Peter stepped back in the boat that the text says, and they worshiped him too. This is the kind of witness that we have to have, not only in our own lives, but for the other lives that are around us, the other lives that we encounter. And I remind you, that you will truly know what's in you. Not often when the sun is shining and all is going on well around you and the birds are singing, it will be in the moments of storm when your faith is really required. There is so much that we claim and desire to achieve as followers of Jesus Christ. But if we're gonna be a real witness, the truth is we gotta get out of the boat. Amen. I invite you in every occasion that I have to pray with me that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On this day, I pray that all of us move beyond our comfort zone, not just because we're taking simple risk, but because that risk is a witness of an act of faith. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord smile upon you on this day and rest greatly upon your life. We ask this on this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.